uh, um, <coughs> just the letter from uh, Abe that Aaron had sent everyone about the renewal, unless there's something. Okay. <laughs> I can. What about the Excel spreadsheet? Maybe that's a better. This one. No. Um. Not to be recorded. Now that I'm thinking about it, probably it probably is somewhat proprietary, so probably better not. All right. Well, I'll let you do it then. Okay. So the main objective of this meeting is to say which two plans that we're going to be offering. Can you use the mic, Karen? <laughs> Um, so the main objective of this meeting is for the council to decide which two plans we're going to offer to our employees. It's sort of, you know, over the past, like ever since I've been here, we've offered plan these two plans are similar to them before we had went with a medical trust. And right now, leaving the trust is not an option, nor do I encourage it to be an option. Um, because we have a three year contract with them. I don't remember which year we're in, but it is a three year contract. So, and it takes some time to get out of that. That's really a side. My hope is just more to get another one in anyway. the Yeah. So, my hope is that tonight you will say yes, go ahead with what we've historically what we've been offering our employees. And then, um, if it's the council's desire to take a look at making some changes to the health plan or how it's set up or the employee contributions that we um, take some time over the next year and um, put together a, um, a committee, I can't think of the word, of uh, people from you know, full-time employees from different departments to come together and discuss what would be reasonable, um, what maybe would be some options and put those together and then present it to the council maybe in June, um, a little bit before budget time so we have some time to um, you know, kind of digest and make a decision. So I don't, I don't want to be your decision. Um, I realize that we're under a little bit of pressure this year um, as far as the budget. <clears throat> We've been able to lighten some loads as well as more information comes in about in, you know future income for 2021. But at the same time, it's just such an off year. I can't even begin to say this is definitely what it's going to be. So again, just wanted be cautious on the income side. We know what our expenses most likely will be, and hopefully we'll we'll meet somewhere in the middle. So, Karen, yes. just, and just sort of a point of um, I mean, order of information, but I think uh, I don't disagree with you at all in terms of putting together a committee to look at this. It has to be a management committee, but otherwise you get into what could potentially be union negotiations. So if you have employees negotiating mm -hmm. benefit packages. What my so, I'm not um, advocating that the no. packages. I'm advocating you know, if we want to take a look at um, our employees contributing more. That's, that's just, we just have to be careful about how how we put that together. That's I don't fine. disagree with it at all. Okay, yeah. that's fine. I, and again, it's just a committee. Whoever yes. it ends up being, whether okay. appointed or, or however. But okay. I don't think it's. I don't think that it, it should just be a council decision. It, it needs to involve our employees. So. Yeah. I, I like the idea of a committee studying it over a period of some months um, with someone from council representing the council and kind of expressing our concerns about cost, et cetera. Um, and maybe a couple of the supervisors, yourself, Jonathan, um, because then if, you, if the employees own it and they understand our concerns, maybe they'll come to us with a proposal that we don't have to Slap at them, kind of thing. Again, that I, I just sense. have to be careful about the collective bargaining agreements. It has to be management that is involved in that decision. So okay, so well, well, then define for me. I mean, are you thinking like department supervisors with deputy bot? Okay, and that's yeah, fine. If it's if it's department heads, yes. then yeah, I think that's what Jeannie was getting at too. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. sure. I wasn't thinking about yes. a random EMT or yeah. No, I'm, I'm thinking the same way. I, I think, though, that, that maybe you might want to include, you know, one of the hourlies in this. Well, let's, let's hold, we'll take a look and we can explore who, who reasonably can serve on this committee. Yeah. 
Um, because I understand where you, you are coming from that may or may not apply to us. So, um, you know, at this point, we don't have to make a decision on who right, right. to, but let's at least have a plan, you know, a way forward um, so that we can, we can move in that direction. Okay. Sounds like a good strategy. Regardless, we'll at least have a task force taking a good and hard look. So, and I like your thought of not having a knee-jerk reaction. We know the costs are high. It's kind of the same thing with the EMS. We can't have a knee-jerk reaction or we'll all probably be regretting it down the road kind of thing. Driving yourselves a bit. Yeah. yeah. So do you want to kind of go over what the current two plans are? Start there. So I can. Because I know you kind of wanted to make that decision of, but can we stick with these two for now? And then reconsider next year what yeah. some of the other plan options might and, be. And that would be my recommendation to stick with what we have right now, just because um, you know you're, there hasn't been any employee input either on on changing this plan. So I don't think that that's a fair yeah. tactic to take. Um, and mainly, you know, if you change plans, if you're going to try to save some money, it's going to end up coming out of the pockets of the employees. So um, because basically, as you find plans that are lower in cost, it's just increasing the out-of-pocket and, and the deductible. Um, so, but right now we do offer two plans. One is a high, um, is a, a PPO plan. Um, and we're almost evenly split as far as employees, you know, which ones. Half on and, one, half know, on the other. It really kind of depends on preferences. Um, and I just opened up the wrong thing. Are you and Jonathan on the same plan by chance? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, and um, also learned that uh, we can't discuss who's on what plan. Oh, okay. So, uh, so I, more or less, me wanting to ask you questions. Wanting to ask you questions. Yeah, but so. <laughs> That's a. I'm glad to know that. Yeah, I didn't know that. I, 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 that I too, just so. learned that. So, I, um, I, I try to be very careful and I. So we have some employees on each. Yes, if you refer to someone being on the other type of plan, you can't say who, but you can say we have people on that exactly. plan. Exactly, yeah, we have people on both plans at all different levels. Okay. So basically right now, um, the PPO plan is a $750 individual deductible and a $1,500 family deductible. Um, there's a co-insurance of 80% in Paid by insurance and then 20% by the individual after the deductible is met. Um, the out of pocket maximum is $3,250 for an individual and $6,500 for a family. Now, those out of network or those the deductibles and the out of pockets and the co insurance all change if you, or, um, if you go out of network. So, United Healthcare, for the most part, I don't know that people have an issue finding network. Um, but they don't necessarily complain to me, so um, that may or may not be an issue. I was just on United, and it's pretty far-reaching as far as the network goes. So, and then um, the, they have, on PPO plan, you have a copayment. So when you go to the doctor, you know you're going to pay $15 um, or $25 for just a, a regular office visit. If there's a specialty office visit, it goes up to $30 or $50. Um, and then if it's out of network, then you're paying a percentage. Um, there, UHC is really pushing the virtual visits as well, and those are actually really um, cost effective. So for instance, those on this plan, if they have a virtual visit, it doesn't cost a thing. Um, the urgent care is $75, an emergency room visit is $250, and then the inpatient hospital, they're paying 20% um, after the deductible is met. Oh. Up to that thirty-two fifty mm -hmm. for an individual or sixty-five hundred for for a family. And then they have some different tiers for prescriptions. Um, they really try to um, drive people to those uh, the first tier, uh, like the generics, that type of thing. But when you start getting into these really specialty specialized med medications, they'll on the pay. Like um, it's a ten, thirty, and fifty dollar, um, or up to uh, up to a hundred dollars on the prescriptions. So, but if I remember right, I think that like this 
super specially ones were like anti rejection and medications and that sort of thing. Um, so then on the PPO, or I'm sorry, on the HSA plan, or it's a high deductible um, plan, it's and I'm just going to do the in-network one. The deductible is 2,800 for an individual and uh, 5,600 for a family. Um, and then, then it's a 80% coinsurance paid by insurance and 20% by the individual. Um, so their out-of-pocket maximum is 4,300, 4,350, and uh, for an individual and 8,700 for um, a family. But then it changes. Uh, when you go to the co-payments, um, the individual or the family is paying a percentage of the cost of the visit. Um, so if it's a, um, a primary care physician, it's 10 or 20 percent. If it's a specialty, it's uh, again 10 or 20 percent. Um, you, you do have to pay for virtual visit at 20 percent. Also, 20 percent for urgent care, emergency room, and inpatient hospital. So, but the um, I will say uh, the nice thing is the town is putting money into an HSA account. Um, it's 1500 $1, for an individual and $3,000 for a family. And we do that on a monthly basis. Um, so it would be $125 a month for an individual, $250 a month for a family. Um, and so then you can just use that money. I mean, in my, my case, we've had some different things come up. We just use the money that was deposited in the HSA to pay off those other bills. Um, and then for those people that are on the H H HSA um, plan as well, you can put money into that account pre-tax and build that account up, which is nice, up to a certain amount. Um, now I think it's six or seven thousand dollars if you go over it and you start getting the healthy tax stuff. But, um, and is that invested into the market? Do they have control over no, that? No, it's just it just goes into the savings. It's like a okay. savings account. It's, okay. There's no investments or anything. It's just yeah. You know, so like we put we put extra money in our our health savings account because we know we have some some extra bills that might not be covered from that monthly payment sure. or the monthly deposit. So we just put it in there and we take it out. It's Grants a company, the HSA, you can actually invest it if you okay. want. So and that might be you have to look at the the actual rules. I mean, we've got our HSA. Um, most people have it with us uh, here. I think we have one that had an existing HSA that we just put money into in another, um, another bank. So um, the prescriptions again are 20%. So now if you're, so those are the two plans that we have and those are the two plans that I'd recommend going forward. I provided you all of the plans so you can take a look at them and see, you know, how, how, uh, how the employees would be affected yeah. versus how much the town would be saving. So is the HSA, since we put money in, is that the one that costs the employee more if they're part of that plan, like they pay $50 a month versus? No, for both plans, our employees are paying $25 per paycheck um, for a family plan. It okay. was just the individual, they pay $1 a year and that's it. So the cost of the town, the PPO plan is more expensive than the HSA plan and that even if you factor in the amount that we're putting into the HSA accounts, it's still lower than the PPO plan. So. Okay. But you also, I mean, I think we offer this, my guess is in, uh, you know, when, when those two plans were set up, um, you know, you may have somebody that has a lot of health, health issues and so they're going to the doctor a lot, um, where they're, um, the HSA may not cover all those doctor bills once it starts, you know, um, Building up, so for them, a twenty dollars copay is a lot cheaper than, you know, the twenty percent. Um, you know, if you're fairly healthy and you're not making a lot of visits, the H or you're young, you know, the HSA plan is probably the way to go. Um, so I think it was, I think the original intent was just to, you know, give the, the employees options based on their specific health situations. Yeah. So, but that's basically the two plans. In a nutshell, um, and if we were going to change next year and offer four plans or I so we different use, plans, yeah, we can change. We can choose the different plans, but we can only offer maximum offer, two. Okay, so enrollment is that about fall? Time? Yeah, enrollment's going to 
going to start late October. And so this is what we're, this is why they've got some hard deadlines as far as, yeah. you know, us making choices because they're preparing information to get out to employees so make sure the employees get signed up, signed up in time so that we hit that January one. Um, okay. Turnover. So if we did have a task force work on this, we'd want recommendations by budget time or soon after. Yeah. I mean, if we started work over the winter and into the spring, um, you know, we're not going to be able to, the, the trust isn't going to get us the, the renewal numbers until about the same time, you know, that September time frame. just all the different factors that they go through. Um, but they do, the one nice thing that the trust does do is have, they have a member day in usually in April, and obviously this year they didn't, but um, they have all their members come together and you can bring as many people as you want and they go over the status of the trust in different areas that they're, um, they're trying to make, uh, make headway into. And um, they're becoming very focused on wellness because the healthier your, your employees are, the better rates you're gonna get because you're not using the insurance as much. Yeah. And so um, just taking a, a focus on on the whole employee, not just healthcare or, or dental or vision. Yeah. Um, so I would encourage, you know, I'll, when as soon as I get that information, I'll put it out again. I usually send it out and invite. Um, but you know, we could grab that committee and, yeah. and take them down as well. So. I think that's a good thing for us to have that group look at because if we could even incentivize some health initiatives, it might. Yeah help us with our own, yeah. you know, the less less claims we make, yada, yada. Yeah, one thing we are um, <clears throat> doing in November, and I need to make, double check the date and, and confirm it, but the trust is paying for biometric screens for all full-time employees. Um, and so we'll get those on the schedule in November. So, and then that information will not come back to us. It'll, mm -hmm. it'll be kept confidential, but, um, it can possibly identify some areas that you know, maybe we have a lot of high blood pressure. So let's get some some focus on you know keeping your blood pressure down, or maybe it's just stress, and mm -hmm. you know we can um, do some have some you know, targeted education or targeted activities on on improving yeah. um, some of the issues. I know Grant's company. Um, if you go do the screening mm -hmm. once a year, you get a hundred dollar Visa card. Yeah. Because the screening will often say you need to be on a cholesterol med or so preventative care and their company has lowered their cost on insurance more than the cost of these visa cards yeah. and, it, and it does get you to go in because you're like I'll take a hundred bucks. <laughs> well it gets some people to go in because the trust offered that you can get up to 75 or a hundred dollars. So we have people years. do it? Really? Yeah, people, and it was extended out to spouses and kids that are over 18, dependents over 18. Really? And we were just having a handful. Well, we had so a few I don't people know. do it, yes. Huh. I said we had a few people. We had some people not, do it, yeah. But not not were you like, I'm getting enough. my 75? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Were you going for it, Wayne? <laughs> Can we offer any incentive or offer to take two shots for employees for a long time? I think that's part of, you can actually go and get it. Um, is part of your health plan. I think it's free. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
concern is all the years that everybody's worked here, part of the things that employees have done have been taking concessions and changes and stuff to keep this cheaper. I used to be on the committee to help negotiate with the insurance companies. One time, a long time ago. And they will negotiate. Kind of the concessions people come here. This is really one of the main benefits that the employees get here compared to other places. Yeah, other places pay more, but they also get more other stuff. So we don't have that all, all of it, you know. Uh, I mean, it's kind of the weight pressure is felt by from other people. Different things that employees are going to pay no matter what. So I don't know. I guess I'm disappointed that I don't see other employees here. <laughs> yeah, I'm right. Disappointed. It's like maybe they don't care. I don't know. I do care. I, I, we fought for this for years the whole time I've been here. You know, it's part of a, you know, a benefit that the employees have. Yeah, I'm not going to be here forever. It ain't going to affect me as much down the road as everybody else, but no, I'm still going to fight to the end. Well, then I think you should probably be on the committee. Maybe. And it might be that you do the the deep dive, Wayne, and, get, and show that this is the way we need to be. I mean, I, I don't know what that looks like. I know it gets more expensive every year, but we don't bring in any more we revenue. We've that in the past and taken no raises and offer to give it back that we give the insurance. Yeah. Even hiked up. Well, maybe that's the other thing we discover is that the employees would rather have that than, you know, and it, and it could be that we can afford to do both. We, I mean, have we traditionally raised the employee contribution? I mean, for instance, PPO is a dollar a year for the employee. All, all insurance, no matter which plane you're on, the employees are paying one dollar per, per person per full time employee. They're paying $25 per paycheck if they have a family. Yeah. So there'll be spouse, children. Um, is, is it astronomical once you add the 250 to the HSA? Is there an astronomical difference? It's about four thousand dollars a year mm -hmm. per employee or per, per, it, per yeah. difference in the place, I guess. Different between the PPO and the HSA, it's about four thousand dollars. So if we have six or seven on the PPO times four thousand more, mm -hmm. yeah. And I can do. I mean, that's the number that's coming to my head because I did the calculation a while ago, but I don't remember if it was per single employee or if it was a family. So. Yeah, I can get you that number. I'll get you that number tomorrow. Yeah, I just I just want us to do a deeper dive. Uh, I'm totally okay with sticking with the two plans we have. Maybe there's even a better plan or um, there's a way to somehow figure it out. Because um, we, we don't compete as well on wages as we compete on insurance. I definitely think we have a, a really good benefits package, whereas maybe our compensation package isn't quite as good. I think police especially could speak to that because um, I know there's other depart police departments paying a lot better that might not have as good a, as insurance, but they have a higher wage, so then you can afford to pay for the insurance. We have the pension system that we have the option to be on, but we don't, we don't get mm -hmm. it. Well, and someone from your department definitely needs to participate in this because you guys do have a different um, set of your package is a little different than say Bob's department, right? Or an EMS full time I employee. Just feel if you consider raising this to, the, to an outreach stage, then you're going to have some employees in town that's going to basically shut out the door. No doubt, but maybe it's a reasonable stage. Like, would it be reasonable for the single people to pay $50 a month? Like the family 
ones are. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know either. Right. But we do know that every year the benefits line and the budgets is the one going up, up, up. The other ones have remained pretty steady. But our revenue is not going up, up, up. <laughs> you know? And granted, we're capped with property tax caps, but it, it really hurt us this year in the EMS department because Kathy wasn't taking insurance. Then all of a sudden, that line item went from 60 some thousand to 90 some thousand, and we were all like, holy crap. Well, that's what I mean. That's where you saw the giant jump, you know, and brought, I think, a lot of business for a lot of issues. Yeah. Do you, do you remember the meeting some years ago when we looked at insurance with Ralph? Ralph Winters was part of that. And he says it cost us six dollars and eighty cents per hour per employee to provide the current insurance. I've never about that. Well, that six dollars and eighty cents per hour per employee is probably closer to. Mm -hmm. If it's about, I figured in my head I, when we looked at the EMS one, thirty some thousand per employee is what that benefits line item was. Now it included a few yeah, things. Yeah, that Karen said weren't just health insurance, but let's say it's 30 of the 33,000. 30,000 is 15 bucks an hour now per employee that it costs. That's how far it's come from Ralph, when Ralph Winters was on council to now from $6.80 an hour to 15. It's unfortunate, but it is what it is also. So it actually, in some cases, probably costs us more to insure the employee than pay the employee, which is just whack. But that employee getting paid 13 yeah. an hour might be happy with 13 an hour because he gets such a great insurance package. I don't know. And to your point, I did the calculation real quick. It's about $775 difference between for an individual between the PPO and the HSA, and that's including the town's contribution. It's about $1,500 for an employee and child and an employee and spouse, and then it's $3,750 for a family between the two. Pardon? Per year, yes. And Jenny, I, I think the actual benefits and ones, isn't that more like 20? Well, I guess it goes up to if you're at family, it's 28, maybe uh, 28,000 a year for the actual cost. After you take out the employee contribution. Yeah, I got it. Is it 28? <coughs> I, think that's uh, 20. I was thinking 24 for some reason, but now that I think about it. So 28,000. For a family divided by 12 months costs $2,333 a month yeah, to provide that package, right? Is what we're saying. <clears throat> it's a lot of money. Well, in the average work year, it's 10,000 and 80 hours. Um, so I'm hourly basis. Um, yeah, 13, 13, 46, yeah, so it's about doubled since Ralph yeah. Winters made that comment. Yeah. And Ralph was on council, what, eight years ago? Yeah. That's crazy that insurance can, what a scam that industry is. Thank you. <laughs> That's true, though. <laughs> But I'm not saying we should pull. Wayne, I was right there fighting with you when I remember one of our council members saying they should be lucky they even have insurance. And I was like, oh, no, no, no. Uh, right, right. Yeah. yeah. And I was, I fought like a demon woman over that because I didn't feel like we paid enough in wages and that at least our insurance and benefits made up for it. And I don't regret that one bit. I mean, it sounds like we have a lot of work cut out for us for next year. I, mean, I would be willing to make the motion that we continue the existing two plans 
And, sorry, I, and I assume without changing any cost to the employee or you right. know, continue with what it costs the town. Okay, and Bill, you the seconded that? that. Yeah, the okay. the the From the insurance company. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or in here? Okay. So we got that out of the way. <laughs> I don't know that anybody did. I mean, I felt there was a problem from the beginning when they offered. Uh, you know, the guy sat right in the middle of the toll screw and I did like blood work on the first one of the year. You know, free blood work testing. And one time it happened, it never happened. <coughs> months ago at Chewing Gum Instrument, but they said we're not going to pay for that. So I got to go to the job and take over. So my doctor gave me a prescription to buy this Why was they gave me a prescription to buy this one? I didn't tell me they didn't want to pay for it. And they gave me all the insurance companies like that. I don't know. I, like I said, I know there's a couple other employees <coughs> that are happy with, you know, they have the same similar action. They have to like the board work and stuff like that. Granted, we'll go into the gun right now for the next year. And that's the purpose of the task force. Yeah. That's the purpose of the year to move forward and make these, <laughs> look at everything and make the changes or corrections or bring, right. bring everything in and let's <laughs> put it on the table. Right. And could we yeah. survey the employees? Are you happy with? Yeah. Your insurance plan and also what it cost you because I imagine, I mean, right now I would think they'd be pretty happy about the cost. Yeah. Well, and, and the issues that are coming up about the instrument or about the blood work. Right. If you let me know, I can take that to the insurance and get an explanation for you, which I think I've gotten an explanation for you on the blood draw because unfortunately, when we change insurance companies, the insurance laws changed at the, uh, right about the same time. So that caused a whole lot of confusion across the board. So your one your one blood draw free per year is just a general, not diagnostic, just like a well-being check. Oh, I know. I've never. Okay, well then, I will, then you know, but then you can't, then you can't blame the insurance company for that. It's an insurance industry-wide it's industry-wide right. it's industry-wide it changed from it being a when you went would have your blood drawn if they code it as diagnostic you're going to get charged for that well but some of that though it was is uh, i think what the coding is there's arguments between and that's really nothing to do with the fact whether it was a non Free blood draw that year is the problem was with what you're some of that with what you're talking about the coding these mm -hmm. arguments between the insurance companies and the whether it's the hospital doctor's office right. they say we coded it like this and they're saying no they didn't nobody wants to admit they're they coded it wrong you know? well, and, and again I can't yeah. address issues if I don't know about yeah. it and I'm happy I mean if you come in and ask I will get you in contact with the insurance companies yeah, but it doesn't make it to me. Laws, that's what everybody tries to do with the general stuff that you people that normally do, you know. And I said, hey, I'm not the only one, okay? I'm oh, no, I know. It, it gets to me, but it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't, I'm not told directly, so. But if you don't know about it, you can't, I can't address it. No. Yeah. Okay. But even up to today, we haven't had it, even for general stuff. You Could haven't had For for the blood draw. I switched, I would have sent it to one place because of the cost factor. I tell them, if my blood gets drawn, I want to send over here because it's a lot cheaper. Mm -hmm. I think it's over here. That's the organization that's the health care. Mm -hmm. 
poor little kids have no idea what they're in for one day to have to talk about insurance. <laughs> it's going to be like 50 bucks an hour per person when they're old enough to get it. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you.